Today is my day off and um, I am in Bangkok right now. This is right before I go teach my workshops in Doha. 2020, I decided I'm gonna spend a little bit more time working out. Um, I really let my personal practice kind of get away from me. Being in a different country every week, Anytime I had some time off, that was usually travel days. And I think the time change just kind of got to me. So all my days off, I didn't really work out all that much. So 2020 intentions this year is all about just nourishing me. I'm refinding that balance so that doing this dream job does feel like a dream job. Because to be honest, 2019 towards the end, it didn't really feel like that. So. Uh, my advice for you guys is if you're going through the same thing, even if it's a job that you love or if it's a job that you don't, just kind of take a step back and see where you can make minor adjustments. And usually that can just change things around. I feel like we keep trying to fit a square peg into a round hole until we decide we need this huge eat, pray, love moment where we dump our lives and- You want to go away for a year? I used to have this appetite for my life and it is just gone make a complete career change going to italy and then i'm going to india and i'm going to end the year in bali which is fine too and i've done that as well but sometimes it just takes a reset um, to recalibrate and then minor adjustments to do things differently so uh, with that said i'm going to take you through some stretches and these stretches isn't really like a full-on yoga class, but in my opinion, this covers a lot of target areas that are very common with tightness as well as weakness. So we're gonna build up specifically on the adductors, um, hip flexors, so as, as well as a little bit of glute activation because as great as yoga is, it does not cover strength in the glutes nearly as much as it covers stretching it out so um we're gonna get started really simple movements i'm gonna i'm gonna take you through that all right let's get set up starting off in a downward facing dog here i'm lifting up my right leg and i'm stepping it to the outside of my right hand and dropping down onto the back knee i'm just gonna take a simple twist here keeping the belly drawn in and when i put the hand down before i step it back i like to straighten out my leg to get into that hamstring a little bit of course doing the other side as well uh, for you teachers out there something to watch out for in your students is for me this right arm the arm that's down if it's internally rotating a lot and that shoulder is sticking up to the ear uh, you want to have them root that shoulder blade down the back in progression two, the harder option, I'm stepping that right foot to the outside of my right hand and I'm taking that twist again. Here I'm very actively squeezing my legs together. From here, you can start to reach forward so that you get a stretch into that lat, into that side body. And coming into the other side here, same thing. Some other key points to focus on is squeezing the glute of that back leg while you're doing this posture is really gonna allow you to get deeper into that hip flexor. Same thing here, stretching out the hamstring, gotta even it out a little bit. Okay, showing from a front view, I'm gonna start off with that same right leg, taking the same twist. Some other elements to watch out for is that front knee. So keeping the knee over the ankle as opposed to side to side is going to really help you keep your hips stable as well as balance the engagement between the outer hips and the inner thighs. So to fix this is to pull that back leg belly up as well as watch out for that foot splaying out to the side as you can see um, in that back leg. So with your hips nice and neutral, this is gonna help you stay as balanced as possible. All right, now I'm just gonna show you the other side so that you can see a little bit more seamlessly without the added bad engagements, good engagements, right? So they're a lot more stable, a lot better as far as flowing through your practice and not getting in your head about it. So try to remember that sensation in the body as much as possible. So I'm throwing in a side view of this because 
seeing it from the front is pretty easy to see. So if you're a teacher, this is kind of what it looks like when you're walking around the class looking at your students. So here the pelvis is just dropping down, the knee is starting to splay out to the side. You kind of get this sinking effect. And the reason why that's not too great is because as your students get more and more open, um, they're really gonna just start to stretch the ligaments and tendons. So instead of doing this, jumping down, sinking into it, even though it might feel great, really try to hug in together and really find that stability and engagement. It's your hips after all. You wanna keep them nice and stable. Okay, showing the same thing on the other side. I promise we're gonna get into the other progressions. I just feel like this is one of the things that I see the most in students. Here, there it is, sinking. That's why I like to keep the back toes tucked. So it really just gives the body a little bit more of a reminder to stay engaged. Okay, finally getting into the next move here. Uh, sorry, it took so long. We're gonna just build on that previous move and just start to build a little bit of that flow. So I'm gonna lift up here in my left leg, step it to the outside of my left hand. Again, taking that twist, reaching up, keeping that shoulder blade down and reaching forward to get a little bit of that lat stretch. Now I'm gonna step that back foot out to the side, coming into sort of a skandasana, but here you can see I'm a little bit more lifted. Now take the arm away from the knee so that you're just using your glute to stay engaged and stay stable, to keep that knee over the ankle. Okay, showing the view from the other leg, I'm stepping the right foot to the outside, same deal, squeezing the legs in together here as I twist. And when I put the hand back down and rotate out to the side, coming back into that sort of side squat skandasana position, I don't know if you can notice there, but I'm actively pushing my knee out so that my ankle and my knee stay in line with each other. That's a great way of building a little bit more functionality into your yoga practice. Just real quick for your yoga teachers out there, this is gonna be really helpful as far as what you're gonna see in your students who are really tight in multiple areas, ankles, hips, whatever. Their knee is gonna drop in a lot towards that big toe or even beyond it. So here, <laughs> I'm showing you by squeezing the outer glute, even if that means lifting up your hips a little bit higher so that your skandasana is higher, that's okay. If they have the flexibility to lower down, do so. Now, building on to the next one. Oh wait. I lied, before we build on to the next one, uh, I do wanna cover what it looks like from the side. So what tends to happen, especially if you have tight hips, is you're gonna start rounding the low back like this. So if this is you or you see this in your students, then really as you have them push the knee out, try to um, find that anterior tilt in the pelvis, which is what I'm showing here. Now the fix to not over engage in the low back is to draw the front ribs in and then from there sink down to your degree. You could always use hands if you need a little bit more support, but it's better to lift up a little bit higher. Okay, so I'm gonna show you one round of what it looks like running a little bit smoother put together. So here, lifting up the right leg, stepping it forward, taking that twist again, keeping all the engagements, just try to remember as much of the engagements as possible. Dropping down to that skandasana, same thing, pushing the knee out, and then coming back into a hamstring stretch, and stepping it back. It's a great way to target hamstrings, adductors, and glutes all at once in simple movements. Now over to the other side, same thing. Watch out for the shoulder. Notice I'm keeping that shoulder blade rooted down. And then here we go, pushing the knee out. It's okay if the side is a little bit different, just start to notice it without judgment. All right, so these exercises are great. Adding the little twist is great because the psoas muscle doesn't actually run just in the front side of your body. It actually connects to the inside top of this, if this is your thigh bone, it connects to the inside of the thigh bone and it wraps around through the pelvis and attaches to the side of the spine. So. Um, adding that little bit of a twist gives a little bit of more of a stretch into the psoas, which is fantastic. And that's a muscle that is very commonly um, 
tight or weak or both. If you have tight ankles or you have limited ankle mobility, this is great as well. And you need ankle mobility for everything. If you just wanna move comfortably in life um, and you're on your feet, Ankle mobility, that's where it's at. If you have a little bit more time, you wanna get a little bit more of a sweat, you can just hit repetitions of that. So doing 10, 15, 20, 100, <laughs> maybe not 100, but really, really helpful. I know this was super basic. I'm gonna cover some more extensive movements as well as maybe go into anatomy um, in future videos. So if that's something that you wanna see, please leave a comment below. Um, tell me what you wanna see. So my game plan is to hit you with a little bit of anatomy and try to make it fun so that it's, it's, it's a fun learning experience as well as take you onto my travels with me as well as give you a little bit of flow movement mobility and range mobility so that you can really start to get into your practice in a much smarter way. So again, please leave a comment. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, little thumbs up, subscribe, please, if you haven't subscribed already and um, keep practicing with love.